Today we're going to be talking about Firefox hardening. We're going to be talking about Firefox and how we could improve Firefox. Whether that would be through its privacy settings, whether that would be through looks and customization. We're just going to go through the most important things so your Firefox is actually private or private enough because if we're honest with ourselves, if you're using the internet, you are bound to give up some privacy. So we're just going to pri make it private enough. Okay. We're going to make it private to a point where we don't lose any functionality. Okay. So, first off, let's download a configuration file that will actually change the settings and make the browser private. Because before configuration files were made, people would go on forums and look at settings, then they would go to their secret settings in their browser. Thus, uh, it looks like this. You just type in a name for, for like a setting, a variable, and then you make a boolean, a number, or a string value. I'm pretty sure you get the picture. Imagine doing this with like at least a hundred settings. That would take a lot of time. And you would have to manually go through each one. So, yeah. that's That would not be good. <laughs> anyway. I'm gonna give you two options for a configuration file. Uh, so, you can pick between BetterFox or ArkinFox. So, I would say ArkinFox is way better in terms of security i mean not way better it's just better it's better than better fox but it's too private because it actually loses functionality some websites won't allow you to use their services because it's way too private like uh it doesn't give some information that some websites re require to function so i would very much recommend better fox We're just going to download it from code and download zip. I'm assuming you guys know how to download from GitHub. After you have downloaded your config file for Firefox, we're going to make a new tab and we're going to type in the URL bar about colon profiles. And we're going to go through the one that you have right now or or you can make a new one whichever one you would like and then select the profile that you're actually going to use after finding out which profile you're going to use you're going to go to its root directory and open the folder we're going to open our download folder where i guess your config file would be downloaded and you would Drag the user.js file in your Firefox folder. And that's how you basically download and insert your config file into Firefox. I forgot to mention that you should type into your URL bar about colon config and you should type privacy.resistfingerprinting.letterboxing and you should set this to boolean, press the cross or plus, and set it to true. This setting will basically make a square around each window that you open, each website. Uh, and this will basically spoof your resolution. It will hide your real resolution so that you can blend in with more people and it's harder for malicious things or people to find you. Because you're going to be less different. See? It already happened. I forgot to mention that you should go to about colon config in your URL bar and you should type in toolkit.legacyuserprofilecustomizations.stylesheets and you should set this setting to true. And this, this option, this one option will allow you to set a custom Firefox theme. I don't know why it's not turned on by default, but it's not. So we're going to have to manually turn it on ourselves. 
yeah, just make sure to turn this option on if you want to change Firefox's theme. Now, what are we going to be doing for the rest of the video? Well, I would recommend everybody to just download a custom Firefox CSS or theme, whatever you like to call it. Uh, yeah, because if you ask me, I really like personalizing my own things. So, you know, they're personal. Uh, I like changing the default options. I like changing everything to my own desire. And that's the beauty of Firefox. You can change everything however you want because it's free and open source. You can see the code and you can change it to your heart's desire. So I'll give you another two options, but this time for the themes. There are two main websites where you can get your Firefox themes from. Uh, so you have the subreddit called Firefox CSS, or you have the GitHub website called Firefox CSS Store. I would recommend the Firefox CSS Store since I see that they keep updating the website. It's not really behind the subreddit, so there's really no use to use the subreddit since you see like it's a nice gallery you can see each theme and you can even search the themes i mean sure you can search them here but it's way better here because you, you can only see the themes you can't see the comments whatnot uh so the only problem or drawback with themes is that you know since Themes are managed most likely, most of the times, by just one person. They lie in the hands of the individual that's maintaining the project, the theme. So if something happens, like maybe the person that owns the theme just gets bored, or maybe something tragic happens to him, like maybe he dies, the there's nobody going nobody is going to maintain the project unless like somebody makes a fork but that's kind of unlikely uh what i'm trying to say is that theme if you use an old firefox theme there's a big chance that it will not work some things will just break but these new themes you don't you don't have to worry about them at all no worries at all so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pick a Firefox theme. I'm going to pick this one, FF Ultima. I'm going to press download. It's going to take me to the GitHub most likely. Oh yeah. So some Firefox themes actually have a re releases tab. So don't try to download from here. Try going to releases and then you can click the download button then you're going to go to about colon profiles you're going to go to your own profile then you're going to make a chrome folder a chrome directory i i already have one so i'm going to delete this uh and i am going to put my Firefox theme in here. Yeah. Uh, you should most likely put everything that you see in the Firefox theme in your Chrome folder, just to make sure, right? Just to make sure. But uh, the most important files or folders you will need are the user content, the user Chrome, and uh, probably another folder such as this one theme this one you don't need it but if you want to customize your firefox theme because people are just cool they make custom they implement customization into their themes wow people are just so cool nowadays uh this is a guide to how you can actually modify your theme if you're interested in that but uh, we're not interested in that. At least not so far. Uh, okay. I have downloaded everything. I have downloaded a config file. I have downloaded a Firefox theme. Now, we have to restart our Firefox to see any changes. Okay, so after successfully restarting our Firefox, you can see there are... It's changed! There are some changes, and that signalizes that means 
that we are done. That means that we have successfully done our job. Uh, by the way, some themes have some settings or some specific options that can that need tweaking after installation. So you might have to look at the GitHub after installing the theme, but uh, most of the time you won't see themes such as that. So you just install and you're ready to go most of the time. Okay. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you soon.